As Christina made her way through adolescence and into childhood, she recognized that neediness was neither a church nor a societal value. Her observation was that neither the church nor our shared society would either welcome or meet her needs. They didn't want to hear about them. They certainly didn't know what to do with them. And that left her spiritually starving. Now, let me be clear here. It's not that the church doesn't recognize that some people are needy. It's that the people in the church don't want to be seen as the needy. We want to be the ones stocking the food pantry, not needing the food pantry. Add to that the way our society often punishes the needy. Needy people are punished by withholding, controlling, and then there's the labeling. A needy person quickly receives the label of loser, beggar, welfare queen. Christina Cleveland took a good long look at both the culture of the church and the culture of our society, and she found a common thread. Both are built, both were built, and are structured and centered in patriarchal thinking. Patriarchal thinking is not a reference towards men. Rather, it is a communal way of being and doing. And a, a way which we engage in, and at the same time, it's invisible to us. Our patriarchal practices are as invisible as the air we breathe and the water we swim in. That said, it was introduced to the United States by colonizers of European descent who were men. It is carried on by those of us who buy in. So it was under the influence of the patriarchy that Jesus became white and God became the father up above, looking down to judge, maybe love. And you know, neither of those were images of the holy from the beginning. In the beginning, holiness was a spirit hovering, brooding, moving, creating. It wasn't too long after our nation's founding that our shared society became obsessed with the myth of individualism and the myth of the self-made man. 